to talk about my forming process now. The, uh, this is a picture of me in my studio. Of course, I use clay to form my work, but I use several different techniques. And uh, one of those techniques is using the potter's wheel, which I'll show in a moment. Uh, I also coil and pinch my work, and I have quite a few different uh, techniques for the surface of my work. So I prepare the clay. I have a wedging table in my uh, studio. I prepare the clay. I get the air bubbles out of it. Anybody who's worked with clay before is familiar with the process um, uh, to work the clay out. But if you don't wedge the clay, it's uneven and it's harder to work with. I throw on the potter's wheel, and I often throw closed forms. And so you see here uh, several pictures of in the process. Uh, making, centering the clay, making it uh, even, pulling up the walls. And then the, the piece at the top on the right there is going to be the neck of a piece, or the, the middle section of a piece. These hollow forms uh, have been thrown on the wheel. They're, they're hollow on the inside and then they're closed at the top, either left uh, closed at the bottom as well or cut open and then attached to another piece. Here's another one of these pieces getting ready to come off the wheel. So at the end of a day of throwing, and oftentimes I'll, uh, I'll throw one day, throw a bunch of pieces, and then put them together on the next days. Uh, these pieces here are eventually going to put, be put together, and I'll show some of that process as well. Most of the tools that I use off the wheel, um, I use for finishing surfaces, attaching pieces. Um, I have scoring tools, uh, uh, detail tools, and sprigs, which I'll show up here I have a selection of, of them up here with my other work that you'll be able to see and I'll show you that process. So this piece here uh, has, uh, has a thrown piece and you can see here the throwing lines that, are, uh, uh, that suggest how that piece was made. Then this piece has been coil built up using, uh, uh, using coils of clay. If you did this, uh, if you if you did this in kindergarten, or you remember using Play-Doh, the teacher told you to roll out snakes. So these are snakes of clay that are being attached to each other. And up there at the top of the piece, you can see this piece has been built off of the thrown piece, formed together. And then up there at the top, you can see the uh, marks from the coils that haven't yet been pressed together. Um, I call it pinch and coil because these two pieces that come off these kind of spike shapes, uh, these were actually pinched into shape and then attached onto that coil built piece. Here I am uh, working with the piece on my lap. Um, I have a towel so it doesn't get me all dirty and so it doesn't get squished. Uh, but you can see the top of the thrown piece that has been altered. And then this is the other end of that spiked piece that I'm forming. I'm paddling or using a rib to smooth that edge. Here's a different piece, but was done the same way, where the end facing out is thrown on the potter's wheel. Then the, most of the rest of this was uh, coil built or had different pieces that were thrown on the wheel and then attached together. So the wheel tends to make pieces that are symmetrical, round, all the way around. Um, because if you throw them on a wheel, and it happens the same way on either side. But uh, these pieces have been smoothed out and, uh, and cut into, in some cases, so that they bend and twist and are no longer symmetrical. Coils that I add, as you saw in the other piece, don't have to be symmetrical and might twist and turn and, and take strange angles. Here's a piece that has some of these stamps that I have up here that have been pushed into the surface of that wet clay um, to create that texture, that all over texture. You see even a piece in the background. Um, much of my work has these added spring text textures. So the surface, there's quite a few things that I, I do to the work after the forming is complete. Because these are forms, but then they also have a lot of color and a lot of surface added on. And I have examples of most of these pieces of, of exam uh, real life examples. Here are the sprigs and a sprig in action. The, uh, the fired clay, the, the light colored clay here has been fired. This has been through a bisque fire and it's just a small stamp. It's actually made from taking wet clay and pushing it onto the end of an orange. And, uh, and then when it, it dried just a little bit, I peeled it off and what's left is the imprint of an orange. It doesn't look much like an orange because it's not the right color. Um, but these sprigs, the way they're used is I take a little bit, after they've been bisque fired, so they're now porous, and they absorb some of the water, if I take a little bit of clay and I push it onto that sprig, 
the spray absorbs some of the water from the wet clay, and then I'm able to pull it off, and it takes that impression, that essentially mold, and it works as a mold to recreate that texture. So in that little Tupperware, I have uh, a whole bunch of these sprigs that are going to then be added onto the surface. I have tons of these things, because any time I see an interesting surface, be it on a pepper, or a walnut, or a, a piece of packaging that I find, or any time I think of an idea of how I might make an interesting texture uh, by pressing different tools and things into it, I'll try it. These are the sorts of things that I, where I find my inspiration, and I, I take textures, or make textures, or even forms from these things.